Hi guys, it's Tammy with Yellow Sparks Joy. Welcome to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to be discussing one of the hottest handbag trends we're currently seeing, and that is moon bags now in this video i'm going to be talking about 10 designer brands luxury and contemporary who currently have this style of handbag in their current season collections and the brands we'll be looking at today are lv coach of course chanel gucci fendi kate spade the row jw pay mark jacob and stud as i talk through each brand we're going to be discussing style variety naming conventions functionality and at the end of it all i'm hoping that we'll be able to answer the question is this style a trend or a classic now this particular handbag style is by no means a new design but for reasons that we're going to be discussing later in this video it has risen more and more in popularity in recent now months. the idea for this video came about because in one of my most recent videos i went through some of the handbags that were recently released on the coach website now this is the coach boutique website and one of those recent releases is the coach luna bag and this bag from the name Luna, <laughs> is shaped somewhat as a half moon. And in that video, which of course will be linked below, I mentioned that I was somewhat upset at Coach because they had simply taken a style that their sister brand, Kid Spade, had released two years earlier and just made it for their own boutique. And I was wondering what the thought process behind their creative direction and marketing was for them to have very, very similar bags between both brands. And then I began to do some research to find out how many other similar styles there were from other design houses. This year, and I feel like it started from late last year, I feel like the trend really, really, really took off with this moon style bags. When Fendi released the Fendi Graphic, but you cannot deny that it was in everybody's face and it quickly became a fan favorite. Really because of the logo at the bottom of the bag, I think they put their own spin to that shape of bag and they just changed up, changed it up a notch. Whereas the older style moon bags that we had seen were just kind of basic or traditional style crescent baguette bags, the fendigraphy added something extra to it and coming out of a pandemic, we definitely all needed extra. Now you can also argue that the style maybe also gained some steam thanks to the Bottega Judy. That is also another similar shape. So you see why I have a problem about the origins of the shape because there's so many styles or handbags in that shape that you can't really tell which is what and which is kind of why they go by different names so you have moon bags you have semi circle bags you have half moon bags you have crescent bags you have croissant bags i mean they all have that shape and that's the similar shape that the jody has again with that curve in the middle and the top handle and of course let's all just agree that that bag is so beautiful even if it may not be functional or as functional especially in the smaller size it is a beautiful bag with all its curves and edges now for me i first noticed this style um like three years ago when i saw the stud moon bag now, similar to the fendi graphy why the stud caught my eye at the time was that it put its own spin to that style like it wasn't basic because it was different it was almost a circle but with that curve cut out and then again that sim single top handle which i think i somewhat prefer on that style bag than the styles that have the shoulder strap or the crossbody i just like that nice small top handle because i feel it the bags with that particular element just have an edge over the other bags in my own opinion so the stud moon bag really was the one that caught my attention first before all of these other bags that we're now seeing and again that's because of the somewhat unique shape or the unique spin that they put to a classic uh shape another brand that also put a unique spin to that shape is the row now the rose moon bag is a very 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 different from all the other bags that are in the market currently it has a very asymmetrical semicircle shape. If a semicircle can actually even be asymmetrical, the row did that. Very different, very daring, and definitely sets itself apart in this market of 
moon bags. Another designer that did something unique in my opinion is JW Pay. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I actually just found out about that style bag while I was doing research for this video and I absolutely love it. It reminds me of a fortune cookie or a dumpling. I just think it is so pretty to look at. I like that they put their own spin to the style and their different elements that make it different from all the other moon bags. So you can adjust the strap to bring the bag together and close it up into a circle with a hole in the middle and you can also um, pull that apart and have it and carry it as a shoulder bag. I also like that when it comes to functionality, you're able to open the bag from the top. So from the picture on the website, it's showing that you can open it at the top and that gives you much better access to the interior of the bag. Because the thing with this style handbag is that because of that shape, depending on how the opening is done, you may not be able to get your things in and out properly or you may not be able to fill the bag up to its full capacity because the opening is small. But the way JW Pay has done this handbag, the Rantan handbag is the name, the way they've done it, you can pull uh, the two opposite ends apart and then that gives you a whole lot of space to get into the bag now my favorite bag from this line is the rantan super mini bag oh my god that bag is so tiny so cute it comes in different colors and they have this one that is very very on trend with the crystals because we know that crystals are on trend they've been since spring summer this year and they're not going anywhere even in fall winter so this will be a great bag to add as like a dinner bag a party bag a holiday bag but even also something to add a touch of glam to your casual outfit so i'm really really tempted to buy the sparkly purple one actually i'm still undecided between the sparkly purple one and the sparkly silver one because i feel like the silver will be will go with much more uh, outfits or will be a bit more classic and spend longer in my wardrobe whereas i feel like the purple one i might get bored of it or i just want it because it's purple and it's cute i don't know i'm so confused i'm drawn more to the purple one but you guys let me know would you pick the purple one or would you pick the silver one because i can't decide <laughs> And again, I love how JWP have made this mini or super mini bag, as they've called it, very functional because this one has a zip at the bottom. So whereas the bigger sizes, you can open it at the top and then access your contents really easily. The small size may not be so easy because of course it's really, really tiny. So they've done a zipper opening at the bottom and I think that is so cool. So the next brand I'm going to talk about is Chanel. Yes, like Chanel has actually a half moon bag from a long long time ago so this is not in any of their recent collections but I did come across some available on the real real and fashion file and they're probably um, lots more available on other secondhand resale sites and I was really intrigued to find that this was actually like in the 80s I think so they had not a crescent style bag but an actual flat semicircle bag which they called a moon bag so if vintage is your thing or if you particularly like chanel i think this is a good one to look at it had me looking at it <laughs> because i think the quality of the leather is really really top notch and for the price compared to what chanel handbags currently retail for it might be a good bargain if you're looking for something on trend but classic at the same time now gucci also has a moon star handbag in their marmont collection and in their ophidia collection now i'm not sure which one came first but i really really believe that the ophidia one came first that's what i think correct me if i'm wrong if you know let me know in the comments below um so the ophidia is their classic ophidia, ophidia canvas print but what i love about that one is the fact that it has the classic gucci colored stripes at the bottom so just like the fendigraphy that has the um, logo at the bottom. The Gucci Ophidia also has that at the bottom of the bottom curve of the bag. And it just made me think like, who did it first? Like, are we ever going to solve this mystery of who did what first? <laughs> Because I definitely knew about the Fender Graphy before I even knew about this Gucci Ophidia bag. But regardless, I still love this Gucci, Gucci one because of course it is, it reminds me so much of classic old school Gucci. It is a beautiful shape as with all the other moon bag shapes out there. And what's really, what's not to love? Now, both bags, the Ophidia and the Marmont, have very similar features. The only difference is that one is the Marmont line and the other is the Ophidia line. I feel like I prefer the Marmont line because it is more updated. It is leather, so that 
really nice it looks very supple i've not seen it in person but from the pictures on the website it looks really really nice and i do love that the the waves from the uh mamont line as well so again it has that top handle feature which i really love on this style bag but it does also offer a crossbody chain if you would rather wear it that way and if you read the tiny uh paragraph on the gucci website the mamont uh moon bag says that it is from their archives so again everybody seems to be claiming or saying that they are pulling this style from their archives so who did it first next i'm going to talk about the one that i really really love the one that i feel is mine but i just haven't bought it yet <laughs> the kate spade smile bag now here you have a designer who has named the bag something totally different but it makes sense because it's a smile you know half moon shape that same thing and this is actually the one i knew about first so to me this is the one i want for some there's so many reasons because the case paid one offers a lot of different fabric options same with the fendi one as well for fendi i know they have a canvas version they had a wool hound tooth version which I really, really like, and in a big size too. I like that one. But Kate Spade offers leather, they offer tweed, they offer, um, they offered a big size last year, but although I haven't seen the big size this year on their website or in store, right now they have the small size and this beautiful powder blue type color that I totally love. I've been waiting for it to come out in a perfect color. Um, I wasn't really sure if the blue was my thing. I wasn't really sure if the tweed was my thing. And now here we are, I still don't have it. <laughs> They also have the velvet one. They had that for Christmas last year. So beautiful. I love the chain. It's kind of like a the, the rectangle or block type chains. Really nice. Different from all the other chains that I've seen on all the other moon bags. And of course, it also offers a crossbody strap option. And at the end of the day, it is one of the cheapest prices out there. Besides the JWP, which I was looking mostly at the mini size, and that one is about 60 US dollars. And that's a really tiny size bag. Um, the Kate Spade one is a small size, so not bad for size. I have seen it in person. It will hold quite a number of items. It will definitely hold all your essentials and maybe a little bit more. So the price is definitely right. And it's currently on sale. So it's about uh, a little under 200 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, all of the handbags I'm mentioning in today's video will be linked in the description box Video. now from kate spade that i want let's move to the newly released coach luna bag now to me this style half moon bag or this particular half moon bag from coach my favorite band i'm sorry but i'm going to say it is the most boring of all the half moon bags that i'm mentioning in today's video there i said it <laughs> i just feel like it is lacking a whole lot However, Coach makes up for this bland, plain style in the fact that, of course, their leather is quality, great quality. It is top notch. It is, um, according to the website, it is pebble leather. So the Coach pebble leather is actually very, very nice. It softens up as time goes by. So it's really, it's, it's great to feel, honestly. And it's also hard wearing. It is pebble leather. So it's very, very hard wearing. But other than that, it's just a regular half moon bag. There's nothing, there's no bells and whistles. Like what makes it stand out from all the other bags? Quality wise, there are other designers that I've mentioned and that I will still mention that also um, have similar quality or even maybe a bit better than Coach. Even though Coach's quality is great, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just saying that there are other options that are on a similar level as well. So it's just a plain bag. Like at least the case, the Kate Spade one offers that chain option, right? And it offers it in different fabrics. This one is just plain leather. I'm really underwhelmed. The one thing that makes this bag desirable is that um, on Brand Brand's Instagram, Brand Brand is a YouTuber. On his Instagram, he looped the handle of the Luna to make it into a small fortune cookie style bag, very similar to the JWP style and it just makes it look cute and unique that way but that was an individual who did that who did that hack not the brand themselves like they didn't market the bag that way so with the way they've marketed the bag i'm not saying it's not a nice bag or it's not a good bag but i think it's just basic for what it is compared to all the other options in the market currently so mark jacobs has also jumped on this trend i don't know when they released the bag but i've only just discovered it and they've called this one the eclipse bag see what they did there <laughs> So again, naming convention plus one for them because they've played on the name of the style. Um, okay, maybe I should give Coach a plus one because their name is Luna as well, which is 
another name for moon so maybe i'll give coach a pass <laughs> but yeah this is the marc jacob eclipse bag i have mixed feelings for this one because the bag does have style elements that i love especially the chain so it has that um mixed tone chain silver and gold i think it's silver maybe pewter and gold really nice on half of the strap and there's the way they've um, styled it on their website you can loop that part of the chain down to the bottom of the bag and hook it on the d-ring there so it gives it another look which i really think is great marketing see this is something again that coach didn't do Marc Jacobs has done it. They've marketed this bag already this way. So we don't have to think too much. They've already done the thinking for us. I also like the price. It is a little over 500 Canadian dollars. And I like the two colors it's coming. I don't know if there's any more colors, but currently on the Marc Jacob website, I see it in two colors, a very nice yellow that I should otherwise like, but I feel like the chain detail doesn't stand out as much on the yellow option as it does on the gray option. So um, I'm really interested. Have you guys ever seen this bag in person? If you have, let me know what you think about this style. Next, let's go to Pauline. To be honest, when I was researching this style, this um, moon style, Pauline wasn't coming up in all of my Google searches, but I know, like I really, really knew, I had it in my head, that I had seen this shape of bag from Pauline before. I'm like, Pauline is a type of um, designer that doesn't really jump on trains. They make their own trains. And I feel like I had seen this way back when from Pauline. So I can't really remember when this came out, but it is called the Numero 10. And for it to be Numero 10, I think it's one of their more recent styles. So maybe they did jump on this trend, who knows. But still, Pauline, of course, is known to be a very, very good design house when it comes to quality. I don't have a Pauline bag personally. I've never seen one in person either, but from the reviews I have read, their quality is impeccable. They're also handmade bags, so I know that it has to be really, really good. And for the Pauline bag, what I really love, particularly in this black one that I'm looking at, is the contrast stitching. Again, also the price point, very comparable to the Marc Jacobs. That's also something to consider if you want to partake in this trend and don't want to have to spend so much on a luxury designer option. There are contemporary designer brands that offer you the same quality at a more, more affordable price. And last but not the least is LV. Now for me, this is another one where I had to question what this design house is doing. LV, first of all, came out with the loop bag and then they came out with the over the moon bag. And I'm like, can someone explain to me what the difference is? Because all I see is the loop bag is canvas or fabric or cotton and the over the moon bag is leather. Oh, and you know what? I don't, I'm speech. That's it. I'm speechless. Done. <laughs> now, according to the LV website, the loop bag was released in the Cruise 2022 collection, which means it is a fairly recent bag compared to my darling Kate Spade bag from two years ago. And of course, the stud bag from even before then. And of course, the Chanel bag from the 80s. But they're also claiming that it is inspired by the croissant bag from the house archives. So clearly, all of these design houses are pulling from their archives. So again, this was definitely a style that trended in the 80s and the 90s. So do we see how style keeps coming back? So can we really say that this style is trendy or classic? I do love the leather option of the over the moon bag. I think that would be my pick from LV if I were to choose. And I also love that pillowy, puffy vibe. Of course, they're using this opportunity to jump on two trends. So the moon bag trend and the puffy trend, which does not seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. And if this bag, from what I can see on the website, is anything like the Cousin bag, which I have seen and felt, I think this one will be very, very, very nice. From what I can see, this style is definitely not new. It is something that has been done in the 80s and in the 90s, but I feel like it has evolved over the years. What I'm trying to say is that moon bags are not necessarily a new style, further reinforcing the fact that fashion always comes in cycles. So I can't really say that one design house is copying another because baguette styles are a classic. They've been around for years and years and years, and they just keep evolving in shape and style and size and so i really think that this moon bag trend stems from the baguette style trend that we saw a lot last year from the fendi baguette even to the coach um pillow tabby that was really really popular two years ago last year and it's still going strong so that style of bag that shape of bag that bag that molds to your body when you wear it, i feel like that is where this trend is coming from it's like a classic satchel or a classic tote 
every designer has one of those in their design house. I've also seen that many of these houses have incorporated more than one trend in this style handbag. So we've seen the puffy trend, we've seen the crystal trend, we've seen the mini bag trend, all in this one moon bag trend. So it's kind of a way to take off more than one trend, but in one item in your wardrobe. So you might be looking to consider that before deciding on which of all of these handbags you want to add into your collection. And speaking of trends, I do have another trend video coming up soon. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, hit that tiny notification bell so you don't miss when I upload that video on fall 2022 handbag trends. Now, one trend that I have discussed previously is the trend on denim handbags. And I'll leave that video here for you to watch. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.